you a psychic, sensitive, or seeker who wants to learn more? Welcome to the Mystic School with Sarah Wiseman, where we dive deep into all things mystic and metaphysical. Here's Sarah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mystic School, and especially welcome to you as we have our winter solstice show today. Um, actually, depending on how you look at it, I, I look at it as tomorrow, December 21st, is the actual winter solstice, at least here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, that should be happening at 1.47 Pacific time tomorrow, December 21st. Um, but some people celebrate it tonight, waiting up until dawn, perhaps, uh, some people, <laughs> some people do that. Some people will do something tomorrow. So, um, just being aware that this is, this is a celebration that may not be something that is highly celebrated where you are, especially if you're in the U S it's not one of our biggest traditions, but in other places around the world, in um, uh, Britain, in Ireland, in the Nordic countries, there's a version. Um, in Japan, there's a version. In Sydney, they have the opposite, of course, but there's also these people are celebrating uh, in Northern Hemisphere this idea of the light returning. So today, is actually our shortest day and it is our longest night and so um, as astrologers and others started to look at this and noticing that this is what was happening in terms of the um, our experience of day and light as we move through the seasons of course we begin to take this symbolically and spiritually uh, what do we do in the longest night and of course we wait for the dawn and as we're kind of moving towards our new year it's a great time to look at um, as we're you know we're sort of tonight or today is that period of time of the longest night where we ref we go back to these other times in our life when it has once again been the dark night of the soul or the darkest hour before the dawn or the worst of times and again this cycle of dark light dark light it repeats yearly it also repeat, repeats every 24 hours daily and it also um it also just repeats in our karmic self so death excuse me birth death rebirth birth death rebirth this cycle of creation and destruction that we can't get out of and so even though right now we are in the longest night um, we can trust that the cycle will eventually come around and become light again so i was watching some videos yesterday of uh, what was happening at stonehenge in the uk in britain um, last year, and it's really, <laughs> it, I've been to Stonehenge a, a, a several times over the years, because as a kid, I used to live in Europe, and so I was at Stonehenge when I was really little, several times, at different points, you know, like at, at age seven, and then at age 12, and then I was there as an adult um, when I was older several times, and so, you know, sometimes Stonehenge is fenced off, sometimes it's open, sometimes you can go right up and touch the stones, sometimes you can't. Um, but what's interesting is that we expect this mon monolithic giant thing, and the stones are big, but really it's kind of like a broken circle of stones in the middle of a crisscross of a bunch of roadways. So as you're watching a video of what happened last year at Stonehenge, um, you're, it's just this juxtaposition of here's this ancient, this very ancient structure and all these people milling around crowding in the dark and cold, waiting for the light, waiting for the celebration, waiting for sunrise. And then in the midst of this, all these cars traveling around with their headlights flashing on the scene. 
And what this brought to me was, first I was surprised because in my mind I had Stonehenge, you know, it was so remarkable. And then seeing the cars and then this idea that, you know, even when it's all dark, we tend to, as we wait for solstice, we often have bonfires or candles, like we're bringing the light in. And even when it's all light there's aspects of darkness so that this idea of it's the darkest night it's the lightest day it's the the it's this idea that it's all dark or it's all light let's just let that go as we approach solstice we are a mix of everything all the time and it is great to turn our attention to Here's the dark part of me. Here's the part of me that's in pain or has healing to do or is panicked or has anger or is afraid. That's the big thing about solstice. We're waiting in the longest night, hoping, trying to keep our fear at bay. And then, and then the light comes, but then again, we're still in the cycle again. So it can be really interesting to be kind of non-dual about this and instead of thinking oh the dark is dark and oh the light is light just you know this idea that everything's happening at once all the time so we come to kind of like a neutral place like we actually inhabit this gray area of what's dark what's light and here we are in the middle at all times it's just an idea. It's kind of different than how you're probably going to hear about solstice. Now, certainly, if we were always in the darkest dark, as it may seem to you that we've kind of been in that for a number of years, we were always in the darkest dark. Of course, we want the light to come. Many of you have been through some really extreme situations, not this just this past year, but this the last couple of years. So, of course, we want the light to come. We want the relief. Light brings illumination. It helps us see clearly. It helps us see our see our situation more easily. Of course, we want the light to come. But just holding this awareness that it's not going to be light all the time. Nothing's ever going to be perfect forever. It's not going to be dark all the time. The cycle, birth, death, rebirth, and so on. Lifetime after lifetime. And so with this continual aspect of change, dark to light, dark to light, um, looking at what is the point then? What is the point of inhabiting that gray area? And it's really just becoming comfortable with all sides of yourself. In uh, the 33 lessons, there is a phrase, the true hero quests within. And uh, I just want to read this little tiny paragraph. The true hero quests within. There is no dragon to slay. There is no war to win. There is no mountain to climb. There is only the landscape of what is within, which is you in the universe, which is you as one of the now of the now, which is also you as an earth being with an earth heart surrounding and infinitely connected to all living beings thus the hero's quest is for no chalice no sword no banner the hero's quest in this time is for connection it is for compassion it is for love this is the task of the world you are in now so inhabiting that gray area where you can see the light and the dark and where you understand that the journey is entirely internal and by internal i don't mean at a, a mind or emotional level or body level even it's at a soul level and just kind of holding this as you approach winter solstice as you think about what the dark means to you think about all the dark times you've had in your life um, think about what the light means to you and how long does the light last and how can you inhabit that place in the middle of accepting everything the dark and the light as part of your journey again a little bit different way of looking at this normal way to look at it is oh it's in the dark we have to you know 
we're cold, we're dark, we're waiting, we're waiting. Ah, the light is here, thank goodness. Just recall again, it's a cycle. Always, all one or the other part is always gonna be there. So we can inhabit that middle ground. Alrighty, so uh, we're gonna go to our phones in just a moment. Uh, call in to, for free readings Tuesday. We've got some callers waiting. We'll get to them in just one second. 888 298 5569. That's 888 298 5569 for free readings Tuesday. And uh, for I want to invite you guys, for those of you who are interested, we have signups going now for our January retreat. This is something new I'm doing. We did one of these for uh, this past holiday season that's just wrapping up today. Um, but these are a kind of group. They're very low cost. They're just $22. They're group. You go through it as a group. You've got a group that your cohort that you're working with. And then at the end, we have a, um, we have a soul gathering meeting on zoom. So if you're interested in that, it's uh, the 33 lessons, our January retreat and soul gathering, and you'll find it at sarahweisman.com. It's a great way to go through the work, um, the channeled work together and a great way to start up the year. Okay, let's go to the phones. We've got Razel calling from Florida. Razel, welcome to the program. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Um, yes, I'm in Florida at the moment, but I have talked to you from Philadelphia. Mm. I'm, so you're talking about the dark and the light, and I want to know, uh, it's, a, it's always about, you know, I know that there's a mix. How do I stay focused on the light when the people around me are mm -hmm. in their darkest places? And even though I put my psychic shield and my boundaries up and I keep my vibration high, I just cannot help but be affected by it. Yeah. Um, whether they're sick or whether they're anxious or whether they're angry or just all that stuff. And so that's my, and I love them. So there's the light, but I, I don't really like them <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I get it's you. You know, um, and I just want to say, and especially adult children. That's <laughs> where it's okay. Um, yeah, so that's funny. I, I thought you were going to say adult parents, but, yeah. <laughs> but them too, yeah. if they're still around. So um, I think that it would be interesting, Rizal, to think about, or what I've been thinking about is. First, just inhale everything you can about codependency and see where, at least in in my own life, when I looked at that whole codependency vocabulary, it's like, oh yeah, here's me taking responsibility for everybody once again, or here's me trying to fix everything, or as empaths, we tend to fall into that role really easily and just want to lift everybody up. So looking at that and seeing like what's your responsibility and what's actually not your or my business at all. And mm -hmm. so this helps you detach from other people's moods and other people's um, downer attitudes. Um, does that make sense? Like, like just stopping, yeah, well, opting out. Like, I don't, I'm, I'm not here to fix it at all. I'm, I'm not even, I may not even choose to observe it if it's so, so disheartening i'm just gonna just go to that neutral place and just kind of be like okay how does that feel like this detaching from trying to change it right well i i i get into the caretaking role yes. of you know my husband was sick he was coughing all over everybody i insisted he go to the doctor it was Good. i didn't want to have to and so I over caretake, call it codependency, what you want. I made the appointment. He got mad at me for doing mm -hmm. it. And then my daughter came to visit and he was coughing all over the place without the mask. And I had just given up because I couldn't change him. And then she's furious at him. And then she's furious at me because I was codependent, not, not arguing with him over the mask all the time. So it just was like a soup. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like this, ping, this, yeah, it's like a ping pong show of, yeah. you know, everybody putting in their two cents and, um, 
I think it's okay, especially around the holidays to just, um, well, just to stop taking responsibility for others. And maybe, you know, it's harder with a spouse, of course, because you feel yeah. obligated, but just in your mind, start looking at him as not your job to fix. And, and just like, just kind of take that slightly different angle in your own mind of how you're thinking about it and just notice because, you know, in codependency, when we over caretake, that makes the right. other person dependent, angry, it, it, it never works. It, 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 it creates imbalance and it backfires. So if you just step away, be like, this is an adult human being. I don't need to caretake. They can be self-responsible. I and actually just, see it though as an act of self-preservation. Because if he takes care of himself, then I won't be getting sick. Like it's a hmm, so yeah. A, I guess if you're I'm sharing, not, if you're sharing household, but this is the bigger question. Just apply this to everything. He's an adult male. You don't have to fix him. And in fact, you can't change him. Renell, I'm going to let you go. Just stay with that through the yes. holidays and see if that'll work. Thank I've got some other calls, you. but yeah, yes, thank you for calling can. in. Thank you. Okay. Alrighty. We've got, uh, yeah, especially during the holidays, we want to fix it all. We want to make it right. We want to serve everybody. We want to make sure this person's included. We've got to get the gifts for that. Maybe we're cooking and, and especially, you know, these are often a lot of you guys listening are women. And this is, this is sort of our societal role. And we can back off from this and be like, Hey, we're all adults here. If that's the case. Each soul is fully capable of doing their life, whether it's the life we think is, you know, a good life or, or, or the right track or not is really not our business. We're in charge of our inner work. Let's go to Penny in Virginia. Penny, welcome. Hello. Hi, what can I help you out with today? I don't really know. Um, <laughs> I just had a really, really strong pull to call you. And, um, yeah, I'm, so I'm humming about it, too, because I've been getting, you know, emails from you for a few years. But today, uh, and I have, I know well enough, I know my, my intuition well enough that when it says do something, do it. Yeah. Well, what's the main thing you're working on in your life right now? Would you say myself, but I mean, like <laughs> what, like if you could pick one soul, one, one trigger, that's always getting you, what would that be right now? Do you think? Procrastination. Oh, okay. Um, um yeah, that's probably because I, um, I've always known things. I've, I've always been different, um, but I've also been kind of because <clears throat> uh, uh, I've experienced things that have sometimes been unsettling. Yeah, very unsettling. And so um, <clears throat> I push things away. Yes, and and I know that there's been you know the the dark night of the soul. I know I'm still working on that because things still trigger me. Yeah. I mean, I'll pick up and cry for just, just intensely. And <clears throat> I'm, 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 I am an empath. Yeah. I pick up on people's emotions. I've had to just cut off a lot of people out of my life that were just, I couldn't handle being around them. <laughs> they just were, you know, they're bad. Yeah. I, and you can't, and it's like you said, you told the girl before me, you can't fix anybody else's problems. Yeah. You, you're only responsible for yourself. That's right. And I know that. Yeah. <laughs> and I've had to, I've taken responsibility for my actions, not all of which have been all that good. I mean, you know, I don't think any of us are perfect, but <clears throat> I have learned to be more loving just as much as possible. Just try to be love. I think, um, well, and so maybe also, let me just think, uh, maybe don't focus so much on being love, which is good. But just be like, be whole, be real, be all the parts of you, especially when you're such a deep empath and psychic like you are and 
like I am and other people listening, like that's why we have the show so that empaths and psychics and uh, these kind of folks can can find some support because the world is not really tuned this way yet. We're kind of um, uh, the, the more rare group at this point. There's not as many of us who feel things this strongly or who are aware of how strongly we sense things. Yes. So well, when I was yeah. younger, there was there wasn't even nobody, nobody even talked about this. Yeah, well, I was totally, I was totally alone. alone. Yeah. This is very strange. Yeah, Penny, I think this is normal to feel. I mean, that's how I felt. That's why uh, with the advent of the internet, you can start connecting to people who are having more experiences like you are. And that's why you can get support for, you know, a couple generations ago, we would be burning at the stake because nobody would understand us. Now there is a small you know, maybe 1% of the population, 2%. So go find those people and let go of the people that don't get it. Just that's okay. my wish for you. This solstice is just like, be who you are, acknowledge it and know that it's not going to work for most people in mainstream society. Those people aren't going to work for you. Uh, you got to just find others like yourself uh, who have these same sensitivities and just honor yeah, yourself. I, I have, I've just, I have stopped hiding it. You know, I mean, yeah. my father is sick right now. I mean, he's 95. He's not really sick. He's wore out. He's 95. But, you know, I I can see energy. Yeah. And, you know, I, so I can, I, you know, I try to channel what I can to him, but, you know, and, I, and now I'm not, I'm not even afraid to say it in front of my sisters anymore yeah. or my father. <laughs> and he just looks at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, I think, I, yeah, Penny, I think you're, you're, you're you yeah, you're speaking for all the people out there right now that are just like, yeah, I have all this going on. Nobody gets it. Anyway, I'm going to let you go because I've got another caller waiting, but just be own it. Take responsibility for this is who you are. Um, don't deny it and continue on in that that way thank thanks for calling in i appreciate you calling thanks. okay okay i'm gonna go to shannon from nevada shannon welcome to the program hi hi sir hi. thank you for taking my call hello what's on your mind today so, um i i truly enjoy listening to you so thank you I've made a, a huge work transition this year, and I was a teacher and then um, working like 60 plus hours a week in school. And um, now I'm working on what's next in both work and, and home. So the light part of it, and so to uh, speak, is that I'm so relieved to have that part of yeah. my uh, work life um, that I left it after so many years. And the dark part of the trigger that I'm working on as far as what's next is that I get, I'm like, so many ideas are popping yeah, in yeah. and going. So, yeah, I don't so. think this is a problem, Shannon. It's pretty normal to, you know, after such a big change and what it is, is, you know, you've released that, you've released or are in the process of releasing that previous identity. So it's mm -hmm. really normal to be lost. And I wouldn't seek to figure it out. I mean, it might take a full year to just sort of like, oh, what about this? Okay, how about, I'm not sure. And don't, don't force the path, let the universe, the universe will absolutely guide you, but you got to stay open and not have expectation about what it needs to be. Okay. The main thing is to know, like, okay, I am releasing this identity of teacher and um, I am releasing this identity of, you know, working for this organization or spending my time this way. And who am I now? And you don't need to know yet. You don't. And in fact, you shouldn't really start anything new. The more or you if you have to start something new financially, if that were the case, um, it should be very flexible very part-time is something you can change your mind on really quickly because i don't think where you are now is where you're going to be as you go through this process of exploration okay. i would say the okay. biggest the biggest things probably now to work on are um 
like where your trigger is. I think we were talking about this the first color where your trigger is right now, like the things that are bugging you the most. This is what's calling to be worked on. This is where this is where the soul lesson is, and this may not be related at all to next career step or next work calling step. It might just be related to some inner clearing that's ready to be to be done. Let's okay, got that. it. Yeah, like whatever is okay. the biggest trigger or the biggest couple triggers, because I usually have several going on at once. I, I usually have several issues that I'm working on. That's where the, the ju that's where the juice is, you know, go deep into that. That's what's waiting okay. to, be, to be worked on. Hey, thank you, Shannon, for okay. calling. I appreciate right. it. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh -huh. Bye -bye. thank you. So guys, for winter solstice, lots of ways to celebrate. Um, I think what we're doing tonight is uh, we're going to uh, be outside with some, maybe some music or incense or meditation drumming perhaps we're going to just try and get under the stars a bit and um then tomorrow december 21st around 1 47 some of you guys that are in the group that is doing our meditation will do that others of you um, i would just suggest you meditate at that time maybe set your alarm and just ask for some kind of message some kind of knowing some kind of guidance and just like ask the universe, like just what am I to know? What am I to focus on? What is the guidance? And just sort of ask that question for yourself. For those of you who want to go a little further forward with me this January, we're signing up now for our January retreat and soul gathering. It's just $22. We're going to work as a group through um, this. It's a sort of a combined uh, self-study and live class. And we're going to work through the 33 lessons as a supportive cohort, even if you've done them before. Oh my gosh, I, I did them at least once a year, sometimes more. It's remarkable what, what comes up. Everybody, happy winter solstice to you. Remember, the light and the dark are sort of two sides of the same thing. Be in that gray area, accepting everything all at once. Thanks for listening to The Mystic School, and you'll find me at sarahwiseman.com. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Okay. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.